Welcome to today's 3D print. Today I'm going to show you how to attach one of these to one of these and why you might want to do that. So as some of you know, I like to fly rockets, and um, I like to take pictures of rockets, and I like to photograph rockets. Now when you're taking a picture of a rocket with your normal SLR like this, it's not really much of a problem because you have an optical viewfinder. So you're actually seeing real life when you look through that viewfinder. That's really important because when you're shooting a rocket, it's taking off um, at you know upwards of 100 Gs. At a good supersonic, some of them. Typically, 100 to 400 miles an hour, but some of them can go supersonic. And you're moving through a very small field of view. Think of your field of view as this frame that you're looking at on the camera here. And your rocket is going to zip through this field of view. And you can't, contrary to what you might think, um, with a photograph, you can turn the camera to portrait, which is going to give you more field of view for the rocket to pass through. But you can't do that with video. With video, you have to keep it landscape because otherwise the video looks like this when you play it back on the TV. <laughs> so that would be like you watching me and I'm sitting here looking like this. You know, as right now, you know, I should be sideways on your screen. Okay. So you have to keep the camera in portrait, um, which means you have a limited field of view. On top of that, all modern video cameras, this is a um, Canon XE10. They don't have optical viewfinders. Everything is through the LCD screen or what's called an EVF, electronic viewfinder. Basically, a little tiny LCD screen in the viewfinder. This one doesn't even have that. It just has a big, giant LCD screen. Very nice LCD screen, but it's still an LCD screen, and that's a problem. So this is where 3D printing can come and help me. Um, I want to attach a sight to it. Now, normally, what I might do is on my previous camera that, you know, you guys know what happened to that. You know, it's gone. But anyway, my original, my lens was this big. And that's what I shoot my rockets with. And the lens is so big and so heavy that you don't mount a tripod mount to the camera because then the lens is going to make the camera bend down like that. Well, instead, you have what's called a tripod ring, a ring that attaches to the camera itself, or the lens itself. And then you actually mount the tripod on the lens. With a short lens like this, you don't need it. When you have a big lens like this, you need it. And what I would normally do is I would actually um, drill out the tripod mount and put a male-male adapter in there so that I could actually mount my video camera to my film camera, double up like that. So now I shoot portrait camera, and this camera would be mounted you know, in landscape and attached to the first camera. At home, I would um, calibrate the two cameras. I would zoom them both all the way in, and adjust the mount until the two cameras were aimed at the same point in like 200 yards away. That would ensure that whatever I aim this camera at using the optical viewfinder is also what this camera is aimed at with its optical viewfinder. I don't normally use one this big. I have a smaller camera that I mount to this camera or to the other I used to have. Um, the Then you what you do is you'd, you'd zoom this in as much as you want it to You'd get it focused, and then you'd flip the switch to manual focus. That's important, because otherwise you're just going to focus on the sky behind the rocket, and it's going to be blurry. And the rocket is small enough that the autofocus is not likely to grab onto the rocket and focus onto it. It's going to, it's going to focus on the clouds. So on the ground, you'd pick a target the same distance away as the rocket, and you would lock your focus and switch it to manual focus. So on something like this, if it, yeah, it does. So what I would do is I would get my focus where I want it, and then I would just flip that to manual and then just don't touch the lens. And now I'm good. When I'm ready to fly, I hit record on the video camera and then I ignore it. And as I'm shooting my pictures with the optical viewfinder, I just keep following the rocket after I'm done shooting the pictures and use this as the sight for the video camera. Well, what if you don't have, you know, a $2,000 camera <laughs> to attach or a $1,000 camera to attach it to and you just have a video camera and you just want to use the video camera well that's pretty easy 45 bucks fixes your problem you go online and you get a rifle sight so this is a red dot 1x meaning it does not magnify and that's what you want rifle sight so the way these work is they create a little red dot inside there and that's what you put you aim to make your 
shot, in this case video, but I need to mount this to my video camera. Now this camera has a hot shoe mount. That's where you would attach your flash. So I went on Thingiverse and downloaded a hot shoe mount, which is that. And then I, this here attaches to a Picatinny ra uh, mount rail, which I don't know if I'm saying that right. Picatinny, Picatinny, Picatinny. I think it's Picatinny, um, which is this half, Oop. which is the other half of that mount. And I went into Tinkercad and just joined these together. So this is a zero degree, that's a three degree. I'll get to that in a minute. So this fits into my camera's hot shoe mount. And then the Picatinny rail is this piece here, which is what this attaches to. And you can see I already have it on there. In the Thingiverse file, in the description, I'll have a, the Thingiverse file will have the remix links to the original files that I used to make this. Now, this one here is actually three degrees down. You can see that it's got an angle. And that's because bullets have drop. When you, when you shoot a bullet, it drops like this. Well, I'm shooting photons. They don't drop. <laughs> um, so the windage and elevation adjustment, there's your elevation, and there's your windage. They didn't have enough um, range to get the two sights centered. So I created one with a three degree drop, which angles it down three degrees, which gets me within the range of the sight. So now all I have to do is at home I, or at the field right before I do my flights for the day, um, I adjust as necessary so that whatever I'm aiming at 200 yards away is also what the red dot is aiming at. Now that means I don't need to look at the LCD screen anymore. So the same thing as I did before, I get my the zoom I want, get everything the way I want it, I get my focus locked in, I flip over to manual focus, and then I hit start record. And then I ignore the rest of the camera. I have a pistol grip on this camera, which is really nice for shooting. I wrap my hand like that, and I just sit here with my eye right inside this scope. And all I do is I keep the red dot on the rocket. Just keep the red dot on the rocket. And as long as the red dot's on the rocket, the camera's on the rocket. And I can follow the rocket. It's especially helpful when the rocket tends to do one of those little, whoo, right-hand turds. <laughs> If that happens on the LCD screen, forget it, it's gone, you're never getting it back, but with an optical sight, no problem, just follow the rocket wherever it goes. Even if I lose it, I can get it back, and I'm good. And because I switched the camera to manual focus, we're good to go. So it took me literally 10 or 15 minutes to fab this up in Tinkercad, another 23 minutes to print it on the printer, and I was good to go. And there is your little adapter that will allow you to mount anything you want, really, to a camera. If you have a camcorder, like your little, like your little, your hand grip camcorder kind of deal. Well, then you take the pick a, ten, pick, pick a tinny mount and you put a little square on the bottom of it and you put a little cut into it, a little curve. And then you just hot glue that bad boy right to the top of your camera. And then you'll be able to take this sight and mount it to literally anything you want. So, for example, um, if this were, if this didn't have a hot shoe mount, you, this is a little bit of curve here. I could literally just hot glue that, and just hot glue the mount on there. That's all. Just get it relatively close. You know, um, ideally, what you'd want to do is take a sharpie marker, something like a sharpie marker, put the sight on there, get it kind of close to where you need it to be lined up, especially for your left-right drift. And when you get it pretty close, take a little sharpie and mark where it is on the camera body. Let me see if I can find my camera and show you. Ah, I found it. So here is your typical camcorder kind of arrangement okay so what i would do in this situation is i would hot glue one of these right to here i would just hot glue it right there after i lined it up and make sure it was relatively close figured out what kind of drop i need that's why you'd want to put a curve in the bottom in tinkercad you just take a cylinder turn it into a cut and you'd cut a curve into this just enough to allow you to hot glue that right on top of there and now you'd be able to mount this here like this, like that. And when you're shooting, you can literally just fold this in like that. And you'd sit here like that. This would be here like this. And now you'd have an optical sight. You'd sit here with the, the camera right against your chin like this. And you'd just use that red dot sight to follow that rocket up wherever you need it to go. In fact, I'll probably make one for this tonight. Just because it would be handy. This is only 1080p. This is 4K. 
But um, yeah, that's it. Super simple. This is the this is the kind of stuff you can do with a 3D printer. Even if you have a cheap little printer like a like the um Easy 3DX One or an Ender Two or a King Rune or something like that, you know, it allows you to make stuff like this, and you could fab it up yourself without a problem. It's not difficult to make and not difficult to do. Usually, you can find the two separate adapters you need on Thingiverse, and then just bring them into Tinkercad and cut them up and modify them and get what you actually want. And then you adapt that to whatever piece of hardware you have, and you're good to go. Um, if you guys are, I'll put a link to this in the description too, just for the heck of it, in case anybody's interested in that. Um, it's, not, it's not bad. It's all metal. It's pretty nice. But yeah, I'll definitely make a mount for this for my video camera too. I think that'd be nice. And does this even allow me to turn off? I don't even know if this will let me go to manual focus. I don't know if it has a manual focus option. I'll have to check. It might. I'll play with it. But either way, there you go. That's what you can do with a 3D printer. Make yourself a little adapter to adapt gun optics to your video cameras. <laughs> they work. They're affordable. They're high quality. They're designed to take a lot of abuse. And they do exactly what you need. Now, instead of trying to follow that rocket on that little tiny LCD screen, which is never going to work. It's too low resolution, it's too slow, the lag time is too high. You're just not going to be able to track the rocket on it, except by luck. There are some people who get pretty lucky. They hold the camera out like this and they zoom out wide and they just follow the rocket up. And that works. This lets you zoom in close and still track the rocket, which is really nice. If you have any questions, ask down below. The I will have the Thingiverse link for this adapter, both zero and three degrees, that you can download. And um, that Thingiverse listing will also have a link to the Hachu mount and the Picatinny rail mount that I used to make the file. So, see you later.